Hello and welcome to the Sunday session. My name's Steve Judge. I'm your host of the uh, weekly online discussions uh, from the Football Network world. Um, today I'm joined by two fantastic coaches working in uh, the youth development phase of Jerome Chantrin from Anderlecht and Oliver Shipp from Borussia Mönchengladbach. Um, but uh, before I introduce you to the guys in full, uh, I'm just going to share my screen with you and sort of uh, run through a little bit of what you can expect on today's Sunday session. So with Oliver and Jerome, we will be discussing developing young players for the transition to 11 v 11. Uh, we'll get to a couple of brief presentations from the guys, which will give you an overview of, of how they're working at their clubs. And uh, we'll dive into the discussion. And during that discussion, we want as many questions as possible from you guys. So uh, take a little look down on the uh, on your Zoom screen and you'll see that big Q&A banner. Hit that Q&A banner and fire your questions to Jerome and Oliver. And ideally, to try and fit them in with uh, the areas that we're discussing. So first little bit, we'll sort of delve into the general structure of, of the clubs they're working working with, the sort of player coaches numbers, how they're the general methodologies that they're working within. And then we'll really focus in then on that specific aspect of of that transition of these young players to playing 11 v 11. Um, yeah, what the challenges are that they're facing and, and what are the solutions they're coming up with on the on the training ground to enable their players to uh, make that transition up to the full size game. But so we can get into all of that detail. Let me uh, introduce you to today's guest. So uh, I'll start with Jerome Chantren, uh, FC Andlek. Jerome, how are you doing? Uh, hello, I'm fine. And you? Yes, yes, I'm very well. I'm very well. Um, I just wanted, yeah, very briefly, just uh, introduce yourself to the uh, to the people out there. Um, yeah, a little bit about your and how you're in your current role at, at FC Andlek. Okay, uh, at this moment, I'm a young coach, uh, 25 years old, uh, eight years experience as a coach. Now, at this moment, I'm working with the under 11 at Anderlecht and under 13, and uh, as assistant coach of the under 16. Uh, and I'm leading also the training uh, sessions of our Purple Talents at school. So that's a little bit uh, what I'm doing with the youth. And uh, for the first team, I have also some... Uh, some things that I'm doing from analyzing work. So that's a little bit uh, in the short term what I'm doing for Anderlecht. All right, brilliant, Jerome. Yeah, so we'll get uh, into a lot of that. You seem to be wearing a lot of hats there at, at Anderlecht, which is clearly very good for your own personal development. Um, and Oliver Schupp, Borussia Mönchengladbach, um, probably not too far away from, from Jerome, but Oliver, tell us a little bit about your uh, coaching pathway and your, your current role at, at Borussia Mönchengladbach. Yeah, hi, nice to meet you, everyone. Um, I'm the under 13 head coach of uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach. Um, just worked in my ninth season now, um, just in the age groups from under nine up to under 13. And the last four years from, uh, I, was, I was with the under 12 and under 13. We have a rotation um, at our club where we go with the under 12 and under 13 guy, uh, boys. And then we go back and take the next the next age group of under 12 and 13. Next to my role as the head coach of the under 13, I'm the pedagogue for the for the whole uh, academy, being responsible for any kind of questions and in terms of, of school if they need some help for for the, for the kids and for the parents. Yeah, and trying to 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 bring a good philosophy on this way in the club. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Oliver. And uh, looking forward to delving a little bit deeper into, into your work at Borussia in a moment. But um, for now, I think I'll uh, hand back to Jerome and let you uh, take centre stage and uh, present a little bit more about, about your work and, and how things run at FC Anderlecht. Okay, um, I will do it. I'm going to share my screen as soon as possible. Okay. I hope everyone, everyone can see now my presentation. It's okay like this? Yep, perfect. Okay, 
So I'm going to talk a little bit by our, uh, by our club and our youth development. So uh, our DNA, we are talking about the DNA of Anderlecht. Um, what, what does it mean? Our team is standing for a perfection in ball mastery. So the technical abilities of our players are the most important and also the individual qualities of a guy. Uh, this is what Anderlecht stands for. Uh, for sure, the body mastery is also important. And then we are talking about uh, velocity, um, yeah, quickness, uh, reacting, uh, strength, force, uh, accelerations, all that, that kind of, of this stuff is body mastery. Uh, we ask that our players leading by example. What does it mean? Uh, our players need to be an example on the pitch, but also off the pitch at school. And uh, they are all in a purple talent plan. So they need to uh, live uh, like yeah, for an example. And uh, also fair play is uh, something that we are, uh, we are very strict. Uh, our players, they are self-confidence and they are daring, you know, they need to have some self-confidence on the pitch because we are, uh, our playing style is more attractive. So, uh, and if you are players, if you have some players, they, they, they don't uh, dare, uh, yeah, you can't play attractive. So that's our DNA. We have some dignity and class why we are the biggest team in uh, in Belgium. We have 34 titles and our guys need to become also a player that one day will, will win some titles in our country. And, and that needs to be their ambition. And that's the next word I, I, I wrote down, uh, ambition. Uh, every game, every training session, they need the, they need to have the ambition to progress to for sure to win games it's not obligated but they need yeah we need to create some winners uh, and for sure a team i think every younger guy who has played for Anderlecht or is leaving Anderlecht or is coming back like now our head coach Vincent company they are talking about team and more not only a team they are talking about a family and uh, they said Neerpede it's a family and now Romelu Lukaku, Yuri Tielemans, they're all talking about Neerpede and one day they will come back to us, back to the family in Neerpede. So that what we, that's where our club is standing for. And that's a little bit our DNA. Now, how we translate it to our um, profile. We, like I said before, our individual talent is the most important. So that's always the, the basic stuff with us. So on the left side, you see Yuri Tielemans um, and we are, watching five uh, things uh, in the individual talent. We have some brain mastery. It's the cognitive stuff, uh, how they see the, uh, how can they see the game? Uh, are they moving well in the, in the, in the, in the good spaces? Uh, the mental identity and attitude. That's uh, if there are winners, can they play under pressure? Uh, can they perform? Can they do it well at school also? Uh, if they have some bad luck, will they come back? Uh, and can they have a rebound? Then we are talking about the body mastery. This is, uh, these are the general motor skills, like I said. It's uh, velocity, it's uh, quickness, it's uh, accelerations, it's force, it's strength. It's all the physical type of things. And with the younger guys, we are doing some uh, yeah, body mastery. It will be more multi-move, multi-skills. We have also some specific coaches for this one. Then the ball mastery is the most important. The most important thing in Anderlecht is ball mastery. And the player from our youth, they can handle the ball with the two feet. They can play a long, short passing. They can play with, the, they can give a header. They can uh, finish in goal. They can, they can do everything with the ball. They need to be, they need to be relaxed when they receive the ball under pressure, without pressure. Uh, they need to handle it all. And then for sure, the smartness and cognitive identity. Uh, yeah, smartness, uh, it's a little bit the same as the brain mastery. It's, it's uh, yeah, there is a link between the two. Uh, so these five things there we're looking for with a player of us. And then for sure, there is a transfer to the game skills. And that's the difference between our teams under eight, under nine. They are playing five against five. It's only individual talent. And then from the eight against eight, under 10, 12, 11, 12, 13, 14, we are adding some game skills and that's our tattoo from Anderlecht. Uh, for sure, you you need to have the ball. So we're starting with catching. Then we have, you need to keep the ball in the team is the keeping. Then the progressing to create some chances. And the, if we create some chances, you need to finish 
for sure because otherwise you can't score and then you have the winning and here in the middle you will see after this i'm going showing i'm going to show it in the next slide then you have a strike and our players they know well what a strike is it's uh, when you have a build up from behind that's starting from our goalkeeper and you can score a goal that without the opponent touches the ball it's uh, it's a strike like in bowling and that's our ultimate goal uh, for our uh, players in the 8 8 11 11 it's a build up from behind uh, where you can uh, score a goal without that the opponent touches the ball. Now, this is a little bit how we are working individual and as a team. Then this is, uh, we are playing in Belgium eight against eight. So uh, this is our, uh, we are playing in a diamond, uh, double diamond in the eight against eight, so three, one, three. And then we are transferring it to uh, under 13, under 14, where we are playing in three, four, three with the diamond in midfield. So they have some points of recognition and uh, it's obligated to play three for three with our categories under 13, under 14. So uh, we, we can play another system uh, or another, I'm not talking about tactics. We are talking about animations because for me, tactics and compositions, um, it's all about the animation that you put into it. So um, that's also something that we are talking about. So in Belgium, 8-8, eight, 11-11, eight, eleven, eleven. that's a transition, not 7-7, seven, 9-9. Seven, nine, nine. Uh, it's 8-8 eight, eight and 11-11. Uh, eleven. Then the last one I want to share you uh, are, like I said before, the individual player is very important in, in our youth academy. And here you see some players, they are uh, kidding our academy and they are now pro uh, players. It's like Romelu Lukaku, Michi Bacuai, Marouane Fellaini, once in a while, Vincent Company, now our head coach, Yuri Tielemans, Dries Mertens, Adnan Januza, Leandre de Donker. On the left picture, you see Jeremy Doku, uh, Bornau, uh, Sambi Lokonga now playing for Arsenal. Uh, this is Amuzo, he's still with us, but Bornau is now playing at Wolfsburg. Uh, Doku in Ren. So these guys are all playing with us, and yeah, there are a lot more. So you know, uh, Neerpede, we are talking about purple talents made in Neerpede. A lot of pro players and pro players at a high level are made in Neerpede. And it's also uh, in our national team. When you are looking under 21 or the first team, even the most of our national team players are formed by Anderlecht. And that's something uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's very fun if you are like our technical director, uh, Mr. Kindermans, for him, it's uh, yeah, it's the most uh, beautiful thing on the earth, I think, uh, when a player is leaving our academy to, uh, like Sambi Lokonga this year, to go to Arsenal. It's, um, that's, uh, as a youth developed coach, uh, it's the most important thing uh, that you see these individual guys leaving to play on a high level Champions League one day. So this is a little bit, uh, we are under like, that's our, uh, Thing that we are saying in youth we trust that's our thing at the first team at this moment because we are playing with a young of a lot of young guys from our own academy so uh, that's where company stands for and uh, like we all said uh, mate in Neerpede uh, it's a family so uh, Neerpede is really a family uh, that's a little bit my short presentation uh, about Anderlecht and how we are working there so uh, thank you all Thank you, Jerome. Yeah, that was uh, yeah a great little overview and a taste of 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 uh, what they're doing at Andlecht and then specifically what you're doing in that sort of under 12, 13 age group, which I'm sure Oliver will be chomping at the bit to ask you questions about. But before he does that, I'm going to get Oliver in, pass the screen over to him, and to share a little bit of uh, his work at Borussia Mönchengladbach. Okay. You can see it? Yep, it's all yours, Oliver. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, <clears throat> for us, the, the age group of the under 12 and under 13 um, are doing the biggest, the biggest step in their, in their football career in their life. So at first they are playing by uh, 7v7 in Germany. We start by 7v7, um, six players and a goalkeeper. And then we go by 9v9 and go over to the 11v11. And um, for, for, the, for the transition to the 9v9 and the 11v11, 
they're doing their biggest step the fields becoming becoming bigger and uh, the 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 transition is is very very intense so for us it's a very important age group and to to help the guys we we figured out um three the three most important things um to to giving them a good transition and help them to yeah find a good find a good way to to adopt the new play uh, the new the new game so we when when we talk about the the transition so we are not just talking about the way up to 11 v 11 we just talk as well to the step 9v9 from 7v7 to 9v9 and for us, the most important things are the mindset that the guys, uh, I, I will talk later, that the guys are just uh, open-minded to it, to, to be, be fine with the, the new way of playing and the, the more numbers up. Then the difference between the individual and the, and the group. And the third thing is, is the experience on the pitch. So we, we, we just figured out these three um, yeah, you can say maybe you can say blocks like uh, or points for the most important things to to give the guys a good transition to the next to the next field. Um, yeah, what what do we what do we think about or what do we want to say when we talk about the the um, the, the three points? Um, if we talk about the mindset, so we at our at our academy, it's it's like. Um, we're not just working and, and just saying, okay, it's it's all about football and you just come over here having four times a week training session and then you go home. So if you're having a good week or you're having a bad week, we are having more time with the kids um, than, than, than a father has with his son, maybe. So if he's working hard and working late, so we see it as a coach, as our um, as our responsibility to to give them to give them a good good mood and, and just work and uh so so my my second task as a pedagogue a pedag pedagogue is it right steve you know what i want to say <laughs> okay um is is to bring it up and uh, just give them just give them a development in this way and so we are up to to figure out a mindset on the on the pitch we want to have an openness and an understanding that the that the game is going to change and you are not uh, playing longer 7v7 on a small pitch you are now on, on another field with, uh, with with more players and this is um so we try to 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 get in, in the mindset of the boys to to adopt the new um yeah field um when we talk about the difference between the individual versus group so um the field is getting bigger and bigger and we just we just want to to show the boys that there is a difference and the difference can be in in, in, in the way of passing in the way of dribble and it can maybe or they they can have a time where they where they don't receive a ball when we are going to play 11 v 11 if you're playing 7 v 7 or 9 v 9 every every few seconds you receive the ball and having a good and having a having a, and being in action, this can be something different to the to the um, eleven v eleven, where the, the field is bigger. You have more players, and your contacts and the, the actions with the ball are less. So we just want to to bring out the fun and, and just show the boys, yeah, okay, it's it's another kind of fun, and it's it's more about um, yeah to to work together in a group, and um, yeah, just. Um, yeah, just see the difference between the between the um, sizes of nine v nine, eleven v eleven. The last point um, we we want to figure out and bring it to our to our kids is um, the experience on the field. So it's it's all about to to um, getting an atmosphere where they feel very comfort. Not not a comfort zone where they are totally totally in a in a good mood and um, just know that they don't have to do anything but giving an uh, creating an atmosphere where they know okay um, if I'm going to play eleven v eleven or going to play nine v nine 
um, I, I feel safe and I know what to do. I just trained and, and learned it in the training sessions. And yeah, I just uh, know, know my task and I know that I don't have to feel any pressure if I receive the ball, um, stuff like this. So we are going, going, going on the pitch and it's nothing, nothing special if I say that we are going to, to make a training session in, in bigger forms. Like we are not just playing um, the whole time, one we one or two we two, they are, we are going up to four we four or five we five like like this. And so, in a bigger space, maybe in spaces they are too big, but that the guys just just uh, get to know. Okay, maybe on the weekend we have uh, we have a, a space like this with a with an equal number of, of of players, and then we have to we have to work with this. So. Bringing the guys in this in this way and in the training, we just want to get in, getting them in a good atmosphere um, to be to be clear for the for the for, and be ready for the for the game and the competition. Yeah. And this is all about that we are going to say these these three points are the most important when we talk about the transition from seven v seven up to ninety nine up to eleven v eleven um, that we are going. Um, Yes, having three points, which are going to um, work on each other. Yeah, and maybe you can say, and I, I just want to tell, what I, I just want to ask you what you think about this, if this three, this, uh, three points, um, just having a, um, um, <laughs> I don't know the, the word, just... Uh, <laughs> So Jerome, no, maybe I you. Think, I think those three points, um, yeah, they form a, a pretty strong base. Um, but yeah, before we get fully into that discussion around that, I just just want to sort of clarify one or two things and around the structures that you you work within. Um, so firstly, then with you, with you, uh, Oliver. Sorry, um, at at, at um, Bruce Munch and Gladbach. So in this in these age groups, when you're going from under eleven to under thirteen, at each age group stage i mean roughly how many players do you have in in each age group and and sort of how many coaches are they being different coaches are they being exposed to uh we are we have no no number and, and said we are just working with this uh, kind of numbers uh, of, of, of players we are having uh 15 players and uh, two two goalkeepers but you have to know that the competition is uh up to the to the winter break we play 9v9 and from january we are going to play 11v11 so you have every game in this season you're playing 1v1 against one of, against the opponent and the game in the um, second part of the season you play 11v11 so we just have to have to get a um, um, size of the of the squad that we can say okay it's not too much to play 9v9 and you can uh, you can bring all the all your players on the pitch but you can just not take two less players than when you play in the after the winter break 11 v 11 so um, um we have to we have to bring up like 15 players so we are three coaches and um yeah just some some uh, in addition an, a goalkeeper coach who is working with uh, under 11 up to under 13 and yeah that's that's it that's the structure okay and, and likewise for, for you jerome sort of at each age group roughly how many players are you working with and how many different how many coaches do you have at, at each age group with us, it's uh, our squads are made uh, with uh, 20 to 22 players uh, because uh, under 10, 11, 12 are playing eight against eight, but two similar games. So uh, we are uh, we are playing, for example, against Genk. So there are two games, eight v eight at the same time. So everyone is playing. And then uh, from under 12 to um, second part of the competition, so from January, they will play sometimes 11 against 11 already with their squad. But, you know, there are two goalkeepers and mostly 18 or 19 field players. So, uh, but, you know, the generation under 12 in, and under 13, there are a lot of injuries because uh, you have to grow and, you know, so um, the squads are larger than in under 15, 16, you know. 
but it's because also we are playing, like I said, two similar games. And then our coaching staff, normally there are three coaches and a physical coach and a goalkeeper coach. But one of the three coaches in under 11 and under 12 is assistant coach with under 13 and 14. So, uh, and they are changing. So the uh, third coach of the under 11, he's always assistant coach under 13. And with the under 12, the assistant coach uh, will be, uh, he will be assistant coach with under 14. So, um, and there is a rotation and we work, we are working in three blocks in, in a season. So it's from, uh, yeah, July, just until the end of October and then uh, November till March uh, and then March till the end of the season. These are three blocks and then they are rotating. So uh, the assistant coach of under 13 will return to under 11 and another coach is leaving to uh, be the assistant coach of under 13. That's uh, a little bit how we're working. And yeah, I'm working for under 16 also for sure. So uh, that's a little bit different than, uh, than the others, but uh, that's a little bit how we are working. So three coach, physical coach and goalkeeper coach. Okay. Okay. Um, and we have a slightly different rotation, Oliver. Do you stick with one age group over two years rather than just staying specifically yes. as an under thirteens coach? Yeah, there's a that's up from the the under nine and under ten. They're going by two years with the coach, and then they stay. We have a uh, under eleven coach who's staying in this age group and is always doing the under eleven. And then we got the rotation from the under twelve and under thirteen. And the coach from after after I I'm ready with the season, I'm going back to the under twelve and take again the the old uh, under eleven and go with them for two years. And up there at the moment, up the under fourteen, we are go just going year by year. So every year you get a new uh, coaching team and and new stuff it's about yeah we are we're going to to uh, rotate in the in the goalkeepers and uh, the, the goalkeeper coaches and the uh, physical coaches they after uh, after under third under 14 every age group is, is set up with this with this coaches and the staff yes yeah it's yeah it's interesting i wondered then why specifically at the under 12s under 13s you the coaches will stay with those players for two seasons, whereas you know at under 11s there's not that same that same age group. And any reason why specifically only only two years? No, uh, they're 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 just got coming in this in this uh, in this age group where they are going just in in front of the what is it? Don't we say puberty? Ooh. yeah yeah puberty or yeah maturation i think is the yes so uh they they got a lot of in in in, in, in they they need the structure they need safe they need they need a person they they just talk to and we just talked about the the, the, the role model of the most of belgium teams and netherlands teams but we are just the the opinion just having a coach and having a good relation to this coach and just staying with this it should be very close not a friend but telling them your your problems and your worries so we are just we are just about to say okay in this age group it's it's the most important to stay over two years that they um, that they having a good comfort at, at this time of of your of, of their age Okay, so yeah, to create this more, let's say, a, a, a secure environment for them in a in a period where you say they're going through a lot of changes physically and and also, as we're going to discuss that that transition on 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 the pitch from, from sort of the small sided to the the full size eleven v eleven. Yeah, and they they have they had a lot of uh, insecurities in in their head, so the the mind is changing, and it's about. You get it, you get some they are changing the school in, in this age group uh, with us so it's it's something new and they need for us it's it's okay at this moment you stay here and you know everything and everything is set up not just the school is new and then their friends are new so we are want want to give them um, this the the security to say okay you can come here you know your coach you know your team everything is fine just feel good and okay and come here having a good time and, and play football. So this is the most, most important reason you're going by this. 
I mean, uh, and with that, when you are selecting your players, is that selection that the players are selected at under 11 and you say, OK, you'll be with us for this amount of time, no matter what? Or is there still every season you're you're selecting players to come in and, and go out of the squad? Uh, we're going by telling the players that that our aim is to giving them two two years to arrive and just come down and, and feel good at this club. And after the two years, we should say, okay, let's let's see what what was good, what was not that not, not that good, where you have to improve. Um, the most cases, we are we are right with our decisions. You you can say so. That's not it's not our aim to take a player and just saying okay let's have a look and maybe after the season we just have to uh, go on a different way so um, we just want to make we, we just want to be sure to have a player um, for two years that that the first season is about okay coming here just feel good and uh, know everything how everything is going up at the club and um, yeah this is this is our aim. So maybe there is a maybe there is a player who's not getting in this two years, but it's it's not that it's it's not that not that often. Okay, and and similarly for you for you, Jerome. I mean, um, yeah, are, are you selecting players and and saying right if you're coming to us at under ten, under eleven, our aim is that you'll be here with us for two three years, or are you making decisions on players every every year? Uh, we are making decisions every year. We have some evaluation moments, uh, and but the evaluation moments with us, it's to uh, yeah to progress the player also because we are giving our evaluation sessions with uh, some uh, video uh, material, so they can watch and they can learn and they can progress. And um, for sure, if there is a new player who is entering our youth academy. Um, we are never uh, saying to him that he needs to leave the club again after one year. It's mostly for two years or even more. And uh, I need to be honest, there is not a, a big come and go in our teams. You know, there are a lot of players who are still there from uh, under seven, eight, nine, and they're arriving in uh, under 13. So uh, there is not a lot of come and go. Uh, most, it's, it's normally, it's maximum two three players uh, who are new or leaving and that's extreme already you know sometimes like this year in the squad under 11 there is no uh, new player only the goalkeeper he's a new guy and there is one player who was uh, was going away for the rest there were no uh, transfers in the age under 12 also one guy was leaving and uh, no new guy, so uh, you know it's it's almost the same squad. And then in for sure, then the transfer to under thirteen, there you have some transfers. It can be one or two or three players who are leaving, and one or two who are entering in our in our squad. But um, for the rest, it's it's quite okay. Um, we are trying to work with uh, with the talent that we have, and we are trying to progress the and the players that we have. So. Uh, but for sure, in in extreme extremely circumstances, it can be that a player needs to leave, or or maybe uh, he's not feeling uh, good about the situation at our club because it's too difficult for him. Or you need also uh, to talk with the guy if it's mentally okay, and uh, that's the reason why. But for the rest, uh, it's okay. And also a, a slightly different setup with the with the coaches at those age groups as well that you're kind of rotating through the blocks and coaches mm -hmm. having kind of two hats on. I, mean, I just wondered, yeah, are you able to share what is the what is the thinking behind that? Uh, I think uh, when when you are teaching and giving some training sessions in under eleven and you can go to under thirteen, I think every youth coach in Anderlecht knows every single player. So it's 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 uh, yeah it's quite good because uh, when you are the head coach in under 13 14 you know all the guys who are playing in under 10 11 12 also so it's it's uh, and also if we need to evaluate a player for example it's not only one coach we decide okay he needs to leave or he needs to stay we can stay no it's always with five six coaches they are giving their opinion so and also for the development of a player you can as a coach and as a coach you can learn from everyone 
but also as a player. So as a player, you receive now some information from uh, three, four, five, six coaches. And sometimes it's possible that you you don't have a link with one coach, but maybe with the other, you can you can talk, you can uh, you have a better feeling. So that's all also a little bit uh, the thinking about. Uh, so I think it's yeah, it's quite good for me as a coach also. Uh, like I said, I know every guy, and um, I think for the player also, uh, for the player development, it's better that you can. Uh, receives more information than only from one single coach uh, during a season. So uh, that's a little bit uh, the thinking of the club. Okay, I mean, I don't know whether from the presentations, whether you had questions for each other. I just, I just want to know how, how does it work when they uh, are going to, to be the coach for two teams? So, so, and when I imagine I, I would be a, a coach for the under 11 too, it's always the same time we are going to, to be on the pitch. Is, isn't it a problem for you and the coaches uh, at, at uh, Anderlecht? So, yeah, but that's, we are working in blocks, you know, so we have three coaches under, under 11, for example. And one of the three is leaving as assistant coach for under 13, but he's, he's staying with under 10, 13. He's not giving a training session with under 11 at that moment. So he's, he's really leaving for three months, three months and a half. And then he's uh, full time with under 13, you know. And then after these three months and a half, he's returning to under 11. And it's a second coach who is going to, to be the assistant coach under 13, you know. That's a little bit... Uh, But now for me, I'm doing under 16 as assistant coach, for example. And for the training sessions, it's quite difficult. But for the games, it's like uh, in with the under 11, we are playing in the morning. And in the afternoon, the under 16s are playing uh, against the same team, at the same uh, pitch, uh, you know. So it's, it's, I can stay after that game. And when I'm with under 13, for example, I'm doing the games under 18, you know. And, and it's yeah, quite similar. Okay, so it's all planned and thought. Around. I, 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 I would I would just ask one thing more. So so you have made the experience of your own. And uh, when I think about this and uh, watching this game, and then I'm going to rush over to the other game, isn't it very very hard for the for your brain? So you you I just I, when I have one game with my team, I feel very I feel very tired sometimes. So uh, we are going. Maybe to talk about you having two two games every time on, on the maybe maybe on the same day so yeah i have every saturday i have two games and uh, but for me it's it's quite fun because you are working with two different generations you know and uh, with with under 11 it's it's most of the time the the individual player that you are uh, that you see on the pitch and in the under 16 it, it's more the Also, for sure, the individual talent, but also the, the, the animations and, and the other things that, that, that we can see there. So it's a difference between the two. And it's, it's quite good because you can, you can link the two. And you, are, you can say to the guys under 11, okay, now we are working to arrive at, at the moment at the under 16. And, and there you need to be able to handle this, this, this and this, you know. So, and also the little guys, they are looking a little bit at you as a coach from, okay, He's also working with the with the older guys and and, and yeah so uh, that's a little bit um, yeah for me it's fun it's a lot of work but it's fun because it's a passion you know and and as a young coach as me as a young coach I can learn a lot from the experienced coaches also so uh, and that's the thing uh, like I said a coach uh, is a lifetime student you know and football is changing every single game uh, day so you know. Today, this is hot and tomorrow it will be something else. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's amazing. You know, uh, three years ago, we were giving some presentations on the whiteboard. And now the presentations are giving with, uh, with images on PowerPoint on, uh, you know, that's already a difference in, in only three years. So, that's, uh, yeah, it's nice. Okay. Yeah, I can see how uh, this this way of working that you're always across the different age groups. That if you are wanting to build this um, clear culture of Andalect as being family, 
but you're always across these players. You're always seeing them at different levels at different times within a year. I mean, you can't really say if it's a family if I only see this player for one year and then, okay, I'm never really going to see them again yeah, in their in their career, other than like to say, I hey, said, how are you doing? And yeah, for sure, it's like I said, when you are uh, arriving at Nerpe, that every single player comes to you and say hello. You know, that's that's the the feeling that you have when you are living at Hoogstraat, it's our training camp. Everybody knows, even Romelu Lukaku now today is uh, talking about the training camp in Hoogstraat. You know, uh, these are moments that you will never, yeah, you, it, it, will, it will stay in your mind uh, for a lifetime. And it's, it's fun that every player knows you as a coach and you know every player also as a player, but also as a human being. You see, you see the players also uh, off the pitch and that's, that's quite fun. So, yeah, it's nice. Okay, we have that kind of seeing that you're different sort of ways, but still with the same idea that you're trying to build these um, moments for these players where they can feel secure, have familiarity with, with the people that they're working with. But sort of bring us on to then to the focus of today where, okay, this is the challenge for your players at this age group under 12 to under 13. And I think a bit more with Oliver where there is that step from sevens to nines is more graduated. But when we're making those steps up to 11 v 11, what are the biggest challenges you, you find that you're one that you will start with the, the players are facing and then also what you feel are the biggest challenges as a coach with with coaching that transition so for for me i just going to start your own hope you're fine with this <laughs> yeah no problem um yeah for me for me it's uh for, for me it's hard the, the whole time you're looking for the individual and um you just want want to bring up the player as a as an individual player and just looking for for the skills and uh, the things he's going to improve on his uh, on his technique like this and um, we are going when we are going to to under 13 you don't you hear so many things in, in your mind and thinking about oh you have to do this as a team in a structure and you have to go together in the in the in the way of uh, you, you're going to press and now it's counter pressing and stuff like this and you have to be calm as a coach yeah and, and don't going to to overload the the kids with uh, this this tactics i for 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 this year i got a new um assistant coach and he he's uh, it's his first time at this age group and he's going to to tell me yeah, but but our but but our goalkeeper is going to to this position and the uh, left left back is going to being over here and i'm just going to say it's too much tactics so they are coming from from a field where the where they where they only hear from us it's about your technique and using the right foot and use your other foot and going to to go in the dribble be 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 brave to go like this and now we're we are uh on, on a on a way to to overload them with uh, tactics and so it's it's going to um to be to find a good balance in, in this way of coaching for me and yeah and, and that's the that's the same for the for the for the players that that they are going to to understand the the football game as a as a new one i would say so it's it's about it's, a, it's always about being uh able to go in a one v one situation and, and looking for one v one situations but it's not that uh not that's possible like like the 7v7 when you're going to start from the from the center back position and going up to to score to score a goal in, in five seconds yeah it's it's not possible on the on the big pitch and um yeah that's i guess that's, that's the most uh the most the most things which are important for the for the guys for the kids to to, to know and get to know okay the field is bigger and I'm going to to bring up my my skills in the in the right moments um with with your players Jerome what are you you finding there are the the biggest challenges that they're facing when they're taking that jump from that 8v8 to 11v11 
Uh, for us, it's uh, it's the difference between the spaces. Uh, that's uh, that's a lot of. Uh, normally, they have uh, te the technical abilities they ha they have. Uh, for us, it's now the animations that they need to create on a bigger space and on, uh, on a bigger pitch, and that's in the most important, like uh, the lineup of our uh, defense uh, on bigger spaces. Because, like I explained, we are playing we are playing with a tree in the back. Uh, like in the eight against eight, but for sure uh, in the eight against eight, we are playing on, uh, yeah, it will be 30 or 35 meters, uh, no, 40 meters wide, but now it's 50. So you need to adapt a little bit the spaces also. And that's the most difficult thing. But I need to be honest, the transition 12 to 13 with us, it's quite easy. It will, it's always, uh, it's always a good transition and that's also I think the work of our coaches under 12 and under 13 they these guys are doing a great job they are preparing the guys well in the second part of the season and uh, like now uh, the, the coach of the under 13 also he was last year uh, under 12 coach uh, so uh, he knows the guys and and you know you you you, you already know the qualities and the working points of a generation so now the under 12s of this year, they will be under 13 next year. Every coach under 11, 12, 13 knows the strength and also either the, the capacities and the, and the more difficult uh, things in, uh, in, this, in this squad. So, um, but the most time, the most of the time we are trying to, to train the animations and, and, and um, yeah, we are not talking about tactics uh, on this age. Yeah, it's all like build up from behind. These are animations that we are, are working in the first part of the season and uh, some recognition of uh, spaces. That's the most important and the most difficult thing uh, with our guys. But like I said, we are training uh, a lot of technical abilities also. So uh, because it's, it's it stays important and that's from the under 12 to under 13. In the under 13, we are starting with our purple talent plan that start from under 13 and that will be uh, that plan is in fact the guys they have a training session on monday tuesday and thursday at school uh, in the morning and in the morning training sessions we are training only the individual player so uh, all the topics that we want to see in the collective way we are training more in specific individual uh, exercises like uh, defending on the uh, on the center on a, on a cross, uh, finishing, uh, a lot, playing long ball, short passing, two feet. All these things we are training in the morning so the coach can, can focus a lot more on the animations in the evening training session. So that's also starting from under 13. So that's also uh, a big step for them because in under 12, they are not training in the morning. So then they are going from four training sessions to seven. So it's all it's almost uh, double uh, of, of the of the training session that they had in under twelve. So that's also a difference and also a, a thing to adapt. So these two things are the most important. Okay. Yeah, that's an interesting development. I'm gonna come back to that and dig a little bit deeper in into that. And there's obviously with the the purple talents program. Sounds interesting. I'm sure Oliver has a few questions about that. But Oliver, I was going to ask you first, was interesting that you mentioned I liked, which I think Jerome may have just touched on a little bit, but understanding the, the, the mindsets of the players and that challenge that going to 11 v 11, they're not going to be as involved in the game. You don't get as many touches of the ball. Um, how do you prepare players, reassure players when they're making that step? And I guess it helps also if you're working with players for two years that you can almost predict who are the players who may have those anxieties and those who will be quite comfortable with 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 these slight changes in terms of what their role and what the game is going to look like. Just by by uh, just search, searching. Uh role models for them. So just just working with a video to today, I got a feeling that that most of my players are just watching uh, football on, on TikTok, like for 10 seconds or five seconds, seeing the celebration of the goal and not just 
watching out the game, what the game is about, and what is your, your favorite player, uh, player, what is he doing the whole game, and how often does he receive the ball, and what is he doing without having the ball, where is he looking for open space, and uh, trying to get in this space, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, um, kind of showing them, okay, it's, it's just another task, and the task is going to be more uh, complicated, and it's not just about open the passing lane, receive the pass, and just go. So for now, you have to create a new space and go for a new space. And um, yeah, it's it's just about bringing it up, bringing it up on a video. They are they are learning very good by by visuals, and um, we like we like to take this um, in a in a in a in a talk to the to the players at the at the beginning of the season where where we are going to talk about the role models and just bringing up some uh, some scenes of, of this player and what he's going to do the whole game and not just his goals and celebrations and good tackles so it's just about what is this guy doing when the ball is not in there in their area and and what is he going to do that he's such a good player and there's no one saying uh, my favorite player is is a bad he's a he's a bad one so um we're going to to have a have a view on this player um what is going outside a, a TikTok video so yeah mm -hmm. and it's 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 kind it's kind of good and we see it it works with the with the voice yes well and yourself Jerome you kind of mentioned that things are moving and changing very quickly that you've gone from whiteboard to using digital presentations and again is this similar that you know really communicating with your players through mediums that they will use in their everyday life as Oliver just mentioned there that sort of right not just related to something they may see be watching on TikTok or YouTube videos are you communicating these kind of the information that you want to get across to them is this how you're doing it or you're still very much in a traditional way of just talking it about it on the training ground uh, no, um, I'm trying to to let their cre creativity uh, speaks also. So it will be the games. They are all filmed almost, and they are uh, yeah they are accessible for them also on the platform that we have for the club. So sometimes we ask to make an uh, auto analyze, so uh, they can they can watch rewatch their game, and uh, then sometimes we give some topics like. Uh, What's good? What's what's less good? Individual. What can we do better as a team? What can? Yeah. What was okay as a team? Uh, sometimes I'm uh, sharing my training session on PowerPoint with them, and then I let them go on the field, and I I let them, um, yeah, prepare not prepare the training session, but I let them uh, make the setup of the training, and I let them start, and then. I, I want to see if they get it, what we want to train or, or something like this. Uh, for sure, the day brief uh, after a training session for me is the most important because you can do some things on the pitch, but at the end, okay, you can, as a coach, give some exercises, but if you want to know if the players are, are um, yeah, if they, every, everything understands, you know, they understood everything, you need to have some, uh, some contact with them. You need to talk with them and you can do it in different ways. Like I said, you can ask them questions. Uh, sometimes you can, as a coach, make some, uh, some errors in the exercise and they need to, to adapt or they need to change the exercise. So, uh, because sometimes when you say against the player, okay, you need to run from yellow to red, they're going to do it because you are the coach and you are asking them. But sometimes it's, it's not the right way. So, and then I want that a player can say, coach, but why you are asking this or why you are asking that? Because we can do it otherwise or this option will be better. So, you know, I will that they think about it and not only uh, that they are copy collating what I'm saying, you know. Um, and then the end, for sure, we are, like I said, we are analyzing a lot, but it's to help our players. Everything that we do at the club, it's for a reason. Uh, our training sessions are filmed sometimes. Our games are filmed sometimes and they are analyzed, but it's to use uh, during the evaluation with the player. So uh, evaluation with our player, it's with a video. So, you know, we are not only talking with the parents and the player, no, we are showing them some images and um, so they can, they can learn from it. Uh, because otherwise, when you are talking to a guy of 11 years old, he doesn't understand everything that you are, that you are saying. So if they have some uh, visual uh, things, it's it's easier to uh, 
So that's a technology. And, and in, in modern football, there are a lot of technologies. But I think as a team and as a coach, you need to search the right ones and not using everything. And at the end, you didn't do anything. Uh, so uh, it needs to be uh, a value, a more value for the player. It needs to be an added value for the player. So that's my opinion about this. Okay, uh, to lead us into then a, a little deeper dive into into how you're working on the on the training ground. Uh, there's a question here from from Tolly Unitai uh, for you both. So um, feel free to jump in when you're ready, guys. But here's the question: Do you guys um, coach within a curriculum? Do you have a set curriculum that you work with it with your age groups, or is there a, a certain amount of flexibility to to uh, sort of do things your way. I will start if it's necessary. Um, yeah, f there is uh, for sure. Uh, every coach of Anderlecht, we have some methodologies and uh, they're all worked out and then uh, we need to follow their methodologies. But for sure, as a coach, you are free to, you, to create your own uh, exercises, your own coaching style, your own you need it it's need to fit into the the topics that the club is giving to you like now begin season it's built up from behind and we have some animations and everybody needs to respect these animations but you are free as a coach how to create exercises how to learn your team to uh, build up but it needs to fit in the same way for sure but i think as a coach we are free we can be creative to create exercises to create your training sessions to yeah to share with other colleagues it's uh, it's quite okay with us and we have i need to say honestly we have a nice methodology at our club i think uh, because otherwise you can't create uh, the players that i that i uh, talked about in my presentation you know uh, you can't create a yuri tielemans if you are not doing a, a good job on the training pitch so uh, i think that's the most important thing in, at our club and the most impressive thing at our club is our training sessions and uh, our exercises. So, uh, yeah, for sure. But like I said, we have a methodology uh, in our club. We got it too, for sure. So without this, you can be, uh, you can, can be working good with the, with, the, with the boys and the guys. So um, <clears throat> there's a big one from which is going from under nine up to the under 19. And then for each age group, it's uh, just set down and uh, having some points. And yeah, that's, that's I guess it's, it's, it's okay. We can getting better in this. We have to improve as a, as a club. We are sitting together and, and, and talking about this stuff actually, and um, going, going to find some, some tasks we can, we can do better. Maybe we can work, um, we can work harder on this on this uh, topic. So, but as a good club and in and, and thinking about the thinking about the development and the developing players, you need a um, you need a curriculum to to bring players up. Yes. Just wanted then if you you know you're talking that very much both of you mentioned that in this age group that your focus is very much on the animations players on the pitch the, the 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 technical side of things it's just then when doing then on the on the training pitch and certainly when you're making those transitions how you are working with the pitch sizes and in terms of is there that thinking that all right what is the average amount of running a player is going to do within a pitch size and, and certainly in terms of the animations and the technical side what is it going to be like the average length of a pass so are you adjusting the pitch sizes and numbers of players so so that it's still okay there's not going to be that big a leap when they go to 11 11 that the spaces are still going to be something similar i think uh, every exercise that you give as a coach it's need it needs to be a reality based so like uh, like finishing on goal you are never going to give it in, in in the middle of the pitch so it needs to be in the right uh, space in the right environment and for sure, then it's talk about uh, intensity. If you want to create a lot of intensity, you're going to reduce the space. If you want to uh, do a on-position game with, with the positions uh, during 
the game uh, like Saturday, you're you're using a, a bigger space. So it depends in in what in what moment in the training session session you are in which training session in the week you are because sometimes you need to watch your physical uh, periodization so uh, these kinds of uh, of exercises you need but for sure you are playing always with the distance with the space with the but like a build up from behind it's un- impossible to do it in the middle of the field you need to have your uh, 16 meters and you need to to do the build up from there and on the real on the real positions but then uh, you can give some ball possession games and it can be on a reduced play, uh, space like uh, the Rondo games, uh, like we talk about in Anderlecht, uh, like a four against four with uh, two natural players. Um, it can be on a small space because then you have a lot of pressure. You have a lot of ball touches. Uh, you, need to, you need to have some spare uh, space awareness. So these, these things you are training then. Because when you are doing it on a on a bigger space, yeah, you you have not the same pressure. You don't need to watch this uh, this like on a small space. You need to watch five times. Then you can watch two times because the pressure is not immediately there. So yeah, these things you need to analyze. And sometimes within an exercise, you see that the intensity that you have in mind it's not there. So you can adapt your spaces also. So but. I'm starting all the time from the thing it needs to be reality based and then you can adapt and you can change uh, whatever you want to create the uh, perfect exercise. That's my opinion. I don't know all of reality based for sure, but um, I, I see no problem to play it to play a 4v4 in a, in a too big uh, in a field which is too big so it's kind of a game for me. So maybe you have a situation you go in a you get you go in a in a, in a counter attack and you're going to play four v four in a in a in a half of the of the pitch. So it's it's too big to play this one. So um, we start our week by uh, we we are going to make a, a break on a Wednesday, the first time of the week. We are going to make uh, <clears throat> some some exercises which are chaos based we say so there's no maybe there's a goal in the middle and uh <clears throat> not on the on the on the on the goal line so it's it's totally chaos and they the, the boys have to be um awake in the head and uh being prepared for this and sometimes it's it's yeah it's it's an overload to 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 get this um but but it's okay when we when we go to the to the to the weekend we're just going to the um to the to the game based things that we are um yeah just just bring bring back the the reality so we just want to create reality in the in the, in the first half of the week as well but the, the chaos can can always be set up and uh, just just to, to train a, another part of the of the of the guys so maybe the head and just Working with the hat on a on a on a football pitch. Yes. Hope I hope you know what I want to say, Jerome. It's not against your yeah. Uh, no, no, no. But I I yeah, I want to share. Like I said, the four against four, it can be on a, a reduced space. That that's what I want to say also. It's need it, it doesn't need to be always at the same uh, at the perfect size. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. Like I said, a four against four, and you want to train uh, like for example, first touch. Yeah, it needs to be under pressure, so yeah, the space sure. will be more reduced. Because if it's too large, yeah, you you never have the same pressure. So yeah, yeah. that we can uh, adapt. That's the thing that I wanted to say. And for the other hand, like uh, build up from behind, that's reality based. That's on the position for that sure. we want to for see sure. during the game. So that's a different. But I think it's always around. about the topic for the week. And yeah, uh, yeah. For sure. well, what what uh, what was the last game about? If you're playing midweek, yeah. so it's another training session. And you yeah, need another like setup this, uh, for, yeah, for a for game sure. on the weekend. Yes, exactly. I wondered if you had a, an example of, of that, then possibly Oliver or, and Jerome, uh, if you're having that training block, if you have a specific goal in a week, that if that, what, what you would be starting, if you're having that kind of chaos session that you would throw in there at the beginning of the week, which is helping you to build, build to your main goal towards the end of the week. What would what would be like a, a specific kind of transition through that week that you would set up? 
Yeah, just uh, when we talk about the build up, so and we're talking about the the chaos, the chaos one at the at the beginning of the week. So it's it's up to the guys to find some open spaces to creating numbers up and just uh, coming coming in a good passing position and creating passing lanes for for the guy who's building up with the goalkeeper. And um, yeah, then then we can play it in a maybe in a bigger room in a in a bigger in a in a bigger space and having three colors or four colors and it's it's just about being being individual that this that this kind of building up is is breaking is breaking down to this point that's about going for a run and uh, create a passing lane or creating free space so we we're just going to bring it in a chaos one and, and try to try to um uh, pick pick up one of this of this uh bigger topic um build, building up so and um yeah, it's it's hard to describe in, in words, and uh, <laughs> maybe maybe you know what I want to say. So it's 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 not about the the, the based one like Jerome told. Uh, there's a goal on the goal line, and then you're going to build up. That would not be my Monday session. If we are going to have four times a week, then we are going to try pick pick one of of this one out, and uh, yeah, going going to make this in a in a chaos one. Um, yeah, for me, it's like uh, on Monday, but like I said, we have also the uh, Purple Talent training sessions on Monday, Tuesday and Thursday in the morning. So we are always adapting a little bit in the evening, but in the evening, mostly when, when I was last year, also with under 13 Monday, it was more endurance. So uh, everyone was all the time in movement, but with less intensity. Uh, Tuesday, they are working also with a physical coach. There's, so they have 30 minutes with, uh, with him. And after this, we are doing like some finishing on goal or something like this. And then on uh, Wednesday, it's more uh, intensity. It's, uh, it's uh, also with some distances that they have some volume and, and, and with intensity. And this can be in, uh, in games, it can be in ball possessions, it can be in, in any type of, of, of uh, topics. And then for sure, the Thursday training session, it will be a preparation for the game on Saturday. And also a little bit of um, yeah accelerations with our physical coach, so that you have the last physical activity just before entering the weekend and the game on Saturday. And then the Friday is a recuperation day for sure for uh, preparing the game on uh, on Saturday. That's a little bit uh, by the physical abilities, and in training uh, exercises, like I said. Um, on Monday, it's mostly a passing drill uh, that everyone's is in movement or uh, something like this. Sometimes ball position game, but with not that uh, intensity, with a uh, medium intensity. Uh, on, to, yeah, on Tuesday, it will be more uh, finishing and, and these kind of things. Um, and then Wednesday can also be a, a passing drill with high intensity, but a lot of uh, games and a lot of possessions and these things with a lot of intensity. And then Thursday, uh, yeah, it will be what the coach wants to see. Uh, some details uh, in the build-up, in the uh, third part of the of the field. In the depends on what the team needs to play the competition game uh, on uh, on Sunday, uh, on Saturday. And then in the end, mostly we are en ending the training session with a double sixty. So the intensity is very high, and a lot of duels and a lot of. Uh, transition and uh, that's the end of the training session there so they are uh, ready to to go to the game but it's always a discussion uh, if like for example the training session in the morning was a little bit different than normal they can adapt in the evening so there is always transition between two training sessions also so um, that's a little bit how we work Um, so another question here then for you guys. It's sort of a, generally at under 12s and under 13s, players can be small size physically, especially if you have a number of kind of late developers within your within your groups. So there's longer distances and, and striking the ball further when you're moving to those 11, the 11 full sizes, is, is not quite as it should be. So in those cases, if you have a number of these players, do you then adjust your playing style to match the physical capabilities of your of your players? 
uh, we are not uh, adapting our playing style, never. But but also we are not a team that is playing with a long ball or, or no matter what. We are always building up from behind. And like I said, our technical ab abilities are the most important. So we are also creating animations uh, on the technical abilities of our players. So uh, and we are never adapting our system to an opponent or to no. We are always looking at our team, our players and yeah that's uh, so a long ball or never what sometimes it can be but it's it's very less that you see a guy uh, playing a long ball with us uh, so it's mostly build up from behind on the ground between the lines uh, in animations in movement and normally we have never a problem with the physical abilities of a player and for sure when you are playing with uh, some uh, yeah in Dutch we say lat mature if you are players who are less physically, less strong, they need to search other options. And that's the creativity of a player. Then they need to play not into the duel, but out of it. And they need to search the spaces and they need to search the space between the lines. When you have a, a, a big guy, uh, he can he can sometimes uh, receive the ball into the duel and can win the 1v1 in a, in a duel on fours and everything you want. So, yeah. But we are never adapting our playing style to... Uh, but it's also, like I said, technical academy. So not long ball, you will see uh, uh, normally... I, I, I don't say never, but it's in these categories very, uh, very limited. And for you, Oliver? Yeah, it's the same it does at our academy. So it's about our development, and it's about to to create uh, to giving the the, the boys the, this moments so that that we are not going to to adopt anything that we are going to win the game. So they are going to find they have to going to find solutions for this for the problems and uh, make their own experience. They are they they will learn if there is a. Uh, more physically more stronger player than 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 um, <laughs> then they know they don't have to go in the one v one and uh, maybe they they can go by a double pass or like this and uh, yeah it's, it's 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 nothing to us it's not about the coaches and, and and show the show the coach of the opponent ah I know what do I have to do that we are going to win this game it's about the boys and their development so it's totally up to them and. Uh, Going to find solutions in in this uh, in this system or in this in this way of playing, and um, trying to make the experience. I'm I'm with Jerome totally. Um, it's like the, this little three-letter word that I think was in certainly your presentation, and certainly something that Jerome had mentioned as well. Is that this idea of fun? Um, and obviously, uh, it's a difficult age for a lot of these players, like I say, physically, they're going through a lot of changes. And then on the pitch, the game is slightly changing for them. Um, so with all this going on, how how do you still allow what you do with them that the game still remains fun? I think uh, that's the reason why we less our players uh, creative, you know, uh, when you are talking too much about tactics and, and stuff like this. It's not fun anymore. You need to give them some some space that they can develop their own and they can find their own solutions. And like I said, as a coach, I'm not a PlayStation 5 player. Uh, I have not uh, a controller in my hand during the game. And I'm not saying, OK, you need to run like this. And you, no, they, they need to search their own options. They need to search their own their, on their own the solutions against another team. And um, also talking with the guys, uh, sometimes after training session, ending the training session with 10 minutes fun uh, on when we are going to play uh, and we need to take the bus or last uh, three weeks ago or four weeks ago, we were in a tournament in Holland. And uh, yeah, there in the hotel in the evening, you can have some fun with them. Uh, we, we did some bowling, we did some uh, some stuff like that. And I think uh, Jan van Loon is watching also uh, he was also there on the tournament, so uh, these these are moments that you can that you can laugh with your guys, and and they know with me on the pitch they need to work, and and, and off the pitch they can they can love and they can tell me everything they want, and I'm sharing also uh, some things with with, with them. 
I think as a coach, you need to you need to create uh, some confidence, uh, and it's in two uh, it's in two directions from the player to you and, and from you to the player. So, um, but then I think, yeah, if you let them uh, if you let them a little bit free, they they will uh, they will be happy for sure because it's the the game that they want to play, and it's their passion also, and we share the same passion. So if you can manage this to them then you are already for yes it's, this is what, how i understand my job to to bring their fun on the on the on the, on the pitch and this is the most important things and uh, the, the most uh, difficult thing you got so many parents who are thinking oh my my boy is playing for a big club and he's going to be a professional player And they are going to take a, a lot of pressure on this on this boys, and uh, you have to you have to you have to no. He's just having having to come here on the pitch, having a good time, having fun, and that's it. So, and it's all about to 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 ask to to give to bring them in a good mood, to bring them in a good shape that they that they can have fun and, and show their skills and show their abilities. And this is this is all about, and um, that's that's totally. Like like Jerome said, it's, it's we can we can have next next to the pitch fun with the boys and you can do everything and they don't want I, I don't want to fear my boys on the pitch just shooting the ball away because he's he's having he's feeling pressure kind of me and he's he's just a kid he he's he's just having should should just having fun so it's it's the most important thing to don't be to be don't be that coach who's shouting out loud at the at the at the line the whole time so yeah fun, fun is important very important so did also you just briefly uh, and it's probably not quite the amount of time to go into it fully it might be a, a, a completely whole new conversation in detail but roughly in brief details oliver though your role as a pedagogue what is the sort of information you're communicating to the parents then to kind of okay let's let's keep calm let's not For them to understand that they also can be putting too much pressure on on their children but they also have to give them that space so that they can grow and find their way at first i always take the picture uh, the picture from uh tiago who's talking about his uh, his dad and and he said uh my dad just just bring me to the training sessions and told me he's he's loving me He wishes me all the best for the training sessions, and uh, I I love I love to see you soon, and uh, hope you're doing good. And this should every every parents should uh, should understand that there are there there will be some obstacles for their kids. It's it's okay, it's okay, but they don't have to need, do them when, and give them some extra pressure to um, or to set them under pressure, and um, they are just they are just. Uh, So they sh they should calm down and um, yeah just just being relaxed. It's 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 always about um, when when we are working with the boys, we are going to to give them to give them some obstacles that they are going to solve these problems and going through these problems. But when the parents are going to tell them you have to do it like this 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 this, they are not going to solve them on their own. And then they are becoming no better persons so and then they are going not to become better football players so i'm i'm I, i totally think about if you are a better person and you're going to have a good um a mentality and, and a, a self-confidence to go through these obstacles next to the pitch and on the pitch yeah you can then then every 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 boy of of, of our team has so many and, and so good skills They're going to to go good on a good journey with uh, with us in the club, and um, yeah, we say we say this uh, this to our parents. Don't don't put these obstacles away. Let them just you can help them, but don't go in front of them and, and take the stone, put it away, and let them go their way. So it's up to the kids on the pitch and next to the pitch, and not yeah, just just put this away or throw some from some stones on this way. <laughs> Hopefully you know what I want to say. It's <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's uh, it's all there, there perfectly. Um, 
I think and finally, uh, Jerome, um, I really love this idea of the strike. I think it's very simple, but it really brings the, as I imagine, brings the whole team together that they have a real focus and aim. And it's something that as a, as a, it really fits with what you're looking to do to how you want to develop the players to build up from the back. So whether they're in training or whether they're in a game or whatever situation they're in, it's always there and, and something to celebrate and bring joy and fun. Uh, tell us a little bit more about where it comes from and, and what it looks like in, in reality. I mean, and if you have a video of it, that would be absolutely perfect. Um, it's like, uh, it's game from our, yeah, coordinator, technical director. I don't know. It's, it's like, uh, sometimes we score a goal without, uh, the opponent touches the ball and then we say, yeah, okay, how we can, how we can uh, create something with the guys that they are talking about this and that this is the ultimate goal. You know, because even on Champions League uh, level, you sometimes, it's less, but you sometimes see a strike. Well, we call it strike, but you see a builder from behind that's, that uh, is a goal and, and, and nobody's touching the ball from the opponent. So, um, and yeah, we are uh, talking about this, this thing, all the training sessions and every time that we do it uh, during the game uh, or during a training session, we call it a strike. And now even... Uh, sometimes I, I even uh, I didn't mention that it was a strike, and the guys come to came to me and said, "Coach, coach, it was a strike, it was a strike." Okay, so you know the players are are busy with this, um, and uh, I don't know the goal that I have compiled. I I'm not really sure that it's a strike, but um, it's a beautiful goal that I can normally share with you. So uh, I'm going to share my screen like this. Okay, so here is a build-up with our goalkeeper, and uh, here we are playing between the lines. He's playing between the lines. Uh, he's not touching the defender, so it will be a strike normally. Uh, he's uh, orientating. He's playing between the lines. In one touch, he's scoring this goal, and uh, okay, this is a strike. So it was a build-up from behind. I can uh, replay it one more time. So playing. Uh, this was a, was a risky ball, so it was not pure. But now, okay, this is well done. And two v one, he's searching the free man. He's demanding the ball, and in one touch with the outside of the feet, technical perfection that we are talking about, he was scoring goal. So, uh, yeah, that was a. Uh... It should be a strike even when he touches the ball. What a goal! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. But you know, this this is the idea of strike and of playing between the lines without touching, uh, without the opponent touches the ball. You know, so. Uh... And this is from under 11. So, but also in under 13, 14, 15, uh, 15 we are, uh, yeah, we have some images like this, uh, you know, so that's fun. And that's the ultimate goal as a team. So, um, okay. you know, the players, are they screaming out strike? Was a uh, part of their goal celebrations at any time? Or? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And they are crying to, like, uh, they are saying, coach, coach, it's a, it's a strike, it's a strike. And sometimes after the game, and then they came to me and they said, "Coach, today we more uh, we scored uh, three or four strikes." So yeah, okay, perfect, nice. Uh, so they are busy with it, and uh, yeah, it's quite nice because we played a, a tournament, and the final was against uh, Bayer Leverkusen. So Oliver, uh, it's uh, maybe a, an opponent for you, but it's uh, it was with a lot of respect for uh, Bayer Leverkusen, but it was five 0 in the final, and um, you know that was an extra objective for them to to yeah. To give them something uh, you know and then they were trying to score a goal with the strike and that was then the next uh, the next level of uh, yeah of objective into the game so uh, no. yeah it was a little bit this is it do, did you break it down maybe when they build up and bring it up to to the to the midline did you do that? Uh, it, did, uh... Yeah, no, no. When when it's a when it's a risky game, no. But like like I said, when we are playing against an opponent opponent and it's really too easy for us. Okay. Sometimes we can ask. Okay, we need to score a goal when, like for example, everyone touches the ball or two. Yeah. It must be a strike or when it's too easy. Yeah, it needs to be really reality. Also, you know, when you pause the midline. And there is someone who touched the ball and you need to return. It's also a little bit of disrespect to your opponent, you know, because sometimes 
you need to guard some uh, some uh, respect also but yeah when it's too easy you need to search all the times to challenge our players because they need to they need to learn every moment every moment is a is a learning ability and it's if it's too easy they are not always learning something and then you need to search some uh, challenges so that's the reason uh, why we are implementing this in our philosophy cool i love the idea it's pretty good yeah it's 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 fun as a coach also because you see that your players are are busy with with uh, with this king uh, thing so uh, yeah it's nice beautiful i think yeah i think um we will finish on a strike i think that's a that's a great way to uh, wrap it up guys it's been a yeah a fantastic conversation with you both um learning how you work and the same goals but slightly yeah different approaches some similar approaches and yeah hopefully i'm looking forward to uh seeing a uh, next generation of Anderlecht players screaming strike after scoring a goal in a champions league game i hope it and our first team uh, has won the game steve so uh, it's also uh, a good wow. sign for us okay.